Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna That Me and today we're going to continue the discussion of our perineum. If you haven't watched my previous videos, you should definitely go ahead and watch them and do subscribe to my channel. All right, today I'm going to start the discussion of the superficial perineal pouch. Now, this was a part of the urogenital triangle lying superficial to the perineal membrane. You would know that if you watched my previous videos, right? So, uh, what happens now is that I've already told you that the perineal membrane, what the structure you can see here, this is basically the superficial perineal pouch contents, right? And deep to this is this perineal membrane. So, the perineal membrane lies about here and inside here. And this is the deep perineal pouch. I hope that makes sense. And what you see here, this is the pelvic diaphragm. These are all the pelvic diaphragm muscles, uh, including the levator and the coccygeus. So I hope the orientation had made sense. Now we're going to talk about what lies superficial to the perineal membrane. Superficial or below the perineal membrane, right? So I know that it can get quite overwhelming learning the differences of superficial and deep perineal pouch when and the males and the females, obviously that's a lot of information to process. That is why I am here to give you shortcuts and simple tricks of memorizing these differences in very easy ways so that they're on your fingertips. So keep watching. This, this is how your superficial perineal pouch is. Uh, this is your pelvic diaphragm. Uh, this is the perineal membrane and uh, this is the superficial fascia which means the coli's fascia is right here. So what are the uh, deep bound the deep uh, boundary of the superficial perineal pouch and in case of males and females lucky for you they're both the same. So the deep boundary is the perineal membrane of course the superficial boundary is the coli's fascia. Anteriorly, the superficial perineal, perineal pouch will extend into your genital organs, right? So in case of males, it's the in, into the fascia of the scrotum and the penis, while in females, it's the uh, within the clitoris. And then uh, even in the anterior abdominal wall, the superficial perineal pouch gets continuous there because the uh, coli's fascia is basically continuation of the deep, deep membranous layer of the anterior abdominal wall. So that's why it's continuous with the lower abdominal wall. And posteriorly is the coli's fascia's attachment with the posterior border of the perineal membrane. Here is where the superficial perineal pouch is limited. So these were the boundaries of the per superficial perineal pouch. Let's move on to the contents of the superficial perineal pouch. The most important content is obviously one difference in the males and the females is of the external genitalia in males we have the penis right really want you to focus here the root of penis is made up of these erectile tissues uh, these are the corpora cavernosa on uh, both the sides of the penis and there is a corpus spongiosum now this corpus spongiosum is traversed by the urethra now these are the contents that are lying uh, in the males all right so root of penis with the two corpora cavernosa and one corpus spongiosum. I want you to remember this is the corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum. These aren't muscles. These are what you call the erectile tissues. All right, so do not confuse them with muscles. So the contents in the males of the superficial perineal pouch are these two corpora cavernosa and within uh, in the middle is the corpus spongiosum, which is traversed by the urethra. Uh, whereas in the females, the corpora cavernosa are kind of uh, separated from each other. They're not close to each other and they are lying like that these are the two corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum is absent in females this is the body of the clitoris and uh, another important thing is that in females there is a another erectile tissue called the bulbs of the vestibule all right so these are the two corpora cavernosa in the middle is the clitoris and the bulbs of the vestibule are the second erectile tissue in the females right so the clitoris is made up of these two corpora cavernosa and the bulbs of the vestibule are the contents in the females all right so, and once again these are the erectile tissues not the muscles right now let's move on to the muscles uh, muscles are pretty easy because now you know the erectile tissue all you have to do is muscles are going to cover these erectile tissues right for the corpora corpus cavernosum muscles on each side the covering is made up of the ischiocavernosus muscle all right in similarly in the case of the two corpora cavernosa in males it is covered by the muscle called the ischiocavernosus uh, the second muscle is known as the bulbospongiosus all right the bulbospongiosus is going to cover your second erectile tissue and is going to cover up the bulbs of vestibules in case of females is going to cover up the corpus spongiosum in case of males 
All right, I really hope that makes sense. The important difference between the bulbospongiosis in the two genders is that the bulbospongiosis is united in the midline in case of males, whereas in the females, it is separated from each other. All right, so here I'll show you what exactly I mean. This is basically your bulbospongiosis. You know, it's not meeting in the midline, but in males, this bulbospongiosis is meeting in the midline. And these two are the ischiocavernosis. And I already told you the ischiocavernosis is covering the corpus cavernosum. All right. In the males and the females. And this is the clitoris in case of the female. See that the bulbospongiosis is removed over here to see this blue structure. This blue structure is the erectile tissue in the females. This is the bulb of the vestibule. But if it was removed in case of males, what will you see? What is the erectile tissue? You'll see the corpus spongiosum. Another muscle that I already to told you guys about that is going to lie in the superficial perineal pouch and it is simultaneous to the deep perineal pouch muscle. It is like this transverse muscle. This is known as the superficial transverse perineal muscles of the right and the left side, right? And in this image, I'd like to show you this is the female perineum. These are the two bulbospongiosis muscles. These are the two ischiocavernosis muscles. In the males, you can see these are the two ischiocavernosis muscle. This is the bulbospongiosis. You can see it's united in the midline. So once again, what are the uh, erectile tissue of the males? It's a corpus cavernosum on two sides and corpus spongiosum in the middle. In females, corpus cavernosum uh, with the clitoris and the bulbo vestibule in the middle. These are covered by your ischiocavernosis and the bulbospongiosis muscles. And in addition to that, the muscle is superficial transverse perineal muscles. All right. Moving on, let's talk about the nerves. In the nerve contents, I just want you to simply write down two things. This is the perineal nerve and the long perineal nerve in both males and females. Now, perineal nerve was the terminal branch of what? It was the terminal branch of the pudendal nerve. The perineal nerve will give the SBM for the males and LBM for the females. The posterior scrotal or the posterior labial the branch to the bulb, the branch to the bulb, and the muscular and the muscular branches. So these are the branches of the perineal nerve within the superficial perineal pouch. Long perineal nerve, all you need to remember for this is that it is a branch of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. And now let's talk about the vessel contents in the superficial perineal pouch. The first vessel we've already discussed in our deep perineal pouch, these were the bud branches. All right, the bud branches simply write down the bud branches whenever you see superficial or deep perineal pouch in deep perineal pouch these are the origins of the bud but in the superficial perineal pouch the proper branches are lying branches of the arteries of the penis or the clitoris in case of females right so these are the branch to the bulb there's a urethral artery the deep and the dorsal artery of the penis or the clitoris the other vessel that you need to remember is the perineal artery this is a branch of the internal pudendal artery Perineal artery will give posterior scrotal in case of males and posterior labial in case of female are a branch. And it will give another branch for the transverse perineal muscles. Obviously, someone needs to supply blood to them as well. So these are the these are the transverse perineal arteries given by the perineal artery, which is a branch of the internal pudendal artery. Learn by concept and stuff will get easier. All right. And finally, what is the uh, glands? What are the gland contents in both? Here I already told you that in the superficial perineal pouch, your females will have glands because they wear their heart on the sleeve. So obviously, superficially, the females will have a gland, but in the deep perineal pouch, the males will have their glands. Uh, superficial perineal pouch glands in the females are known as the greater vestibular glands. Males, these are absent. Only ducts of the bulbourethral glands are present and the bulbourethral glands were the glands in the deep perineal pouch. Keep following me for more conceptual and easy anatomy. And until then, thank you so much for watching.